All right, welcome back. It's that time where we take a look at the front pages of our national dailies. And to help go through this segment on the show, we'll be speaking with um, Chris Wando. Chris is the publisher of CKN News. Please, um, Chris, good morning. Thank you very much for having well, me. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Yes, I hope it was easy getting here. Yeah, it was. Um, the road has been relatively free. The third yeah. main bridge has been very, very free this morning. Oh, I guess okay. it's because of the public the holiday. public holiday. Yes. Okay, yeah, well, I, I hope that is the experience um, from, I mean, with all uh, residents of Lagos today. I hope uh, so too. All right, let's look at the front page of the Daily Sun. The Daily Sun is our first, first point of call this morning. Um, the issue of minimum wage is um, the leading headline there. Minimum wage, Labour declares war on governors, resolves to short states paying old salary. Minimum wage, Labour declares war on governors, resolves to short states paying old salaries. Um, there are quite a few pictures here, uh, where, which I'll go through later, but let's look at uh, all the headlines. Lagos makes U-turn, OK's boarding, boarding for exit students, schools to resume August 3rd. Bauchi holds local government election October 17, replies Dogara. Buari bars Salah homage. Carlo seeks prayers for nation. FEC approves the release of 8.64 billion naira for Siemens electricity deal. 499 local governments uh, in 28 states at flood risk, federal government warns. Let's go beside the masthead. Uh, gunmen kill four policemen in a boy attack bullion van. Murder 13 family members, one other in Kogi. A uh, pretty sad narrative there on the front page of the Daily Sun. Let's look at the pictures that we have there. Uh, permanent observer of the African Union to the UN, Ms. Fatima Mohammed, uh, with the Consul General of Nigeria in New York, Mr. Benoyaga Okoyen, and other Nigerian evacuees at the Newark Liberty International Airport, New Jersey, before the departure of the fourth evacuation flight from the U.S. to Nigeria. So it's all about um, evacuees uh, leaving the U.S. back to Nigeria. And then we also have a picture of um, Governor Shei Makindi of Oyo State signing the, the, the year 2020 reviewed appropriation bill into law, and with him are government officials. That's about it on the front page of the Daily uh, Sun. And then the next step will be, uh, the next step rather, will be the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper. Nigeria China trade imbalance widens despite currency swap. Nigeria China trade imbalance widens despite currency swap. Um, it has about two riders there. Nations share of trade volume um, since uh, uh, 2013 is um, 11%. Um, China missing in top. 10 trading partner chat. Uh, moving on, gunmen kill a family of 13 in Kogi community and federal government reschedule for national examination. And then we have, um, okay, there's a uh, graphic details of uh, the Nigerian China trade volume in the last seven years, uh, which seems to be uh, highly imbalanced here, like the headline uh, screams. Uh, let's go above the wall, above the masthead. Disgraf disgraceful rot and stench at NDDC. Quite some strong words there. Uh, you need to get details of this. Uh, it's on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. And um, it continues on page 12. It's actually uh, on the editorial page. Yes, um, interesting there. Yes, before we call on Chris uh, for further analysis, let's look at the nation, the nation newspaper. On the front page of the nation newspaper, Edo, okay, yes, workers fear heightens as killings in security escalate. LLC asks government to rejig approach. Southern Kaduna fears attack during Eid. Uh, Boronu governor convoys, convoy rather, attacked. Boronu governor's convoy attacked. Family of 13 killed in Kogi, four policemen in Airborne State. Uh, Ogun State warns ahead of August 14 worship centers reopening. Fake OK's release of 15.21 million euros, 1.7 billion naira for power deal. Packed with Siemens targets uh, 
25,000 megawatts by 2025. Um, the lowest trip there, why I picked ex-NDDC chief as running mate by Akelo Dolu. You can find that story on page 29. COVID-19 stories table will be found on page 4 of the Nation newspaper. And just um, above the masthead, 2023 opera over Mamandara's number zoning position. Okay, no zoning position. Okay, opera over Mamandara's no zoning position. Buari urges low key Eid celebration, no visitors for president. Interesting one there. And FBN holding a poster 49.5 billion. Uh, Profit, uh, okay, PT profit in six months. Police recall 20 top zonal officers from EFCC. And then to Edo 2020, above Benin, don't turn Edo into war zone. Or Basaki's uh, campaign director, two others resign. Governor has no opponent, says uh, Wiki. Under the pictures we have there, uh, pictures of... Uh, Nigerian Vakuiz, uh, fortunately, on the right hand side is a picture of uh, our own uh, uh, chairman in conversation with the Consul General of Nigeria in New York, talking about um, uh, Mr. Ben Mori Bruce uh, with uh, Mr. Ben Ayaga Okonye. Yes, this was in New York at the airport before departure yesterday. Interesting one there. Okay, so Chris, let's quickly look at um, a few of these headlines here. Yes, uh, let's start with uh, that one on the front page of the Daily Sign. Talks about labor, minimum wage. Say labor declares war on governors, resolves to short state Spain old, um, old salaries. Yes, it is no longer news uh, that uh, quite a number of states in Nigeria, since uh, uh, the new minimum wage was signed into, into law, uh, I'm sure not even up to half of the, st half of the states in Nigeria have uh, been able to pay. While some are paying, some are paying partial payments, while some uh, uh, cannot, or they claim they cannot pay. What, what can you make of this conversation here? Yes, uh, we knew it would come to this. Uh, we definitely knew that it would come to this because mm. prior to the new, uh, newly negotiated uh, minimum, minimum wage, wage, most of the states were finding difficult to pay the 18,000 that was the old uh, minimum wage. And uh, some of us said then that if they cannot pay 18,000, how would they be able to pay 30,000? And that was the problem. And that was before COVID-19. That was before COVID-19. Yes. So some of them were struggling. Very few states um, agreed to pay. Lagos and some of the states but agreed to pay. River State, River State and, and yeah. some of the states agreed. But majority of the states were still finding it difficult. Um, and um, some of them were forced to sign the agreement. Yes. Um, then while that was going on, COVID-19 now setting. And um, everything totally collapsed. And, um, and that is where we are hmm. now. It will be very, very difficult for most of those states to pay. I don't know where the NC, uh, NLC wants to them. expect them to get the money from. Uh, the, the IGR of most of the states is dwindling on a daily basis. Um, that from the national coffers is dwindling. Um, um, the oil prices crash as, uh, as low as uh, at a point up to $15 okay. or even about $13. Minus. Minus. It's, yeah, <laughs> it, it, cra it crashed it crash to minus, minus. minus zero, yes. So, uh, and, and uh, our budget was also rejigged about two, three times yeah. in the past few yeah. months. So, it is a tough call. So, if the NLC uh, is hitting that, then the option might be for the states to resort to restrain um, some of their workers. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So it is a, well, I think this is time for everybody, both labor and um, the state government and federal government to come together to find its lasting solutions to it. This is time to, for us to come together, not uh, the threat of uh, war, no war. war. There is no more, even the private sector, you're talking of government, what are the private sectors? Um, so, are you, so it's not only the government, even the private sector, a lot of people have lost their jobs. So many of the companies have closed. Hmm. There are still very, so many organizations and uh, they have not opened. Uh, they, you and I were talking this morning before we came to the oh, studio yes. oh, about yes. the people in the club, the, the challenges, the challenges, challenges. Being and a lot of yeah. this, so many people that cannot even find. Uh, so I think uh, there should be a more realistic approach to the issue rather than uh, uh, threat. For me, I don't think this is the right time for us to go that uh, that way. So oh, okay. uh, I, I think we should have a they should have a rethink and try to engage 
the government, the state governments, mm. the more, mm. and find that we are, because if the government decides to now retrench, it is the same labor that will come out to say you are retrenching you can, our you can members. Suck. Yes, you can yes. suck. Yes. Yes. But in, 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 in view of this, this development, what, what exactly would you think could be the meeting point, the meeting point uh, for, for both government and labor? For me, um, the middle point should be um, giving a time frame, um, getting a time frame, um, um, a less okay. kind of commitment yeah. from the state government yeah. uh, by labor. Um, give us a commitment. Yes, we know that we are still within the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but when exactly can you start this? When can you so Can we have a three months uh, moratorium? moratorium. You, you, can we have a six months moratorium? Mm -hmm. Do we say by the end of December, 2020 things would have normalized and and we'll make sure that the state government uh, stick to that agreement well, well, well I, i'm sure that could be a tough one for for governors to come to come in terms with yeah. like you rightly said uh, the, the, it was difficult for them to for some states to to agree to pay the money uh, before 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 covid now covid is here yeah. who knows how long covid will be here for exactly. who knows how long the economy will take before recovering and exactly. then even if the economy recovering what's the guarantee that they're probably get, getting more share from um, from the faculty location exactly. and our viewers are that the phone lines are also open you can call in and make your contribution it's also also your your day on the show so sad narrative here now let's look at this one fec approves the release of um, 8.64 billion Naira for Siemens electricity deal. That sounds like um, uh, you, you know about this deal. It's been ongoing for for a while. Yeah. One would have thought that uh, maybe COVID also would have um, slowed them um, activating the whole process. But um, here we are. Government seems to be heading. Uh, you, most most likely that could uh, help us see uh, what looks like a solution to the power issues we're having in Nigeria. This Siemens deal. If if you know if the Nigerian factor is not playing. I like the use of the word if, yes. if, if, real emphasis. Um, but um, a little bit, uh, you could also remember that um, with all intents and purposes, this was the, um, the deal that um, the former chief of staff to the president yes. went to seal yes. uh, in, uh, in, in Germany. Uh, in Germany. Yeah. And where he contracted the was OK, just hold, <laughs> your, hold your thoughts there one second, Chris. Okay. Let's, let's pick this call from Osuya. Osuya is calling us from Edo State. Osuya, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Lucia. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, I'm surprised uh, that uh, uh, the uh, um, your the guy uh, the guy I'm calling the moderation there is uh, asking where governors get money to pay the minimum wage. At the show, governors have uh, many of them have only. Um, wanted to scuttle the issue of, you know, pay of minimum wage. Now, tell me, they get so much money for school fee votes, meanwhile, the security all over the place, is here with the retirement of the convoy, you know. So I think they two should also look inwards. And I know that, you know, they're suffering, you know, in Nigeria, you know, by workers. And, you know, see how they can also sacrifice, they cut down on their, on their costs so that they can have money to, you know, uh, pay workers. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sia, for that contribution. Uh, let me let our, all our contributors know that, please, when you call, uh, turn down the volume on your TV set um, so that we could have a, a swift um, uh, conversation. Now, Sia is of the opinion that um, um, the governors have not been sincere in their spendings. They've not been sincere in the whole conversation around cutting costs. Uh, so that shouldn't make it um, an issue for them to pay the minimum wage. But that has been the conversation uh, for ever knows how been, long it's been. Um, yes. Um, yeah, to some extent, I agree with Tosuya, yeah, but this, uh, this con um, conversation has been on for years and donkey years, um, and there's no let go in yes. as far as that issue is concerned. Are they going to cut down their number of convoys? Are they going to cut down their number of um, assistants, personal assistants, and all the rest of them? Uh, but um, the COVID-19 is also um, telling on them, yeah. because in the past um, four or five months, none of them have traveled abroad. None. So definitely, you see them on a daily, uh, weekly basis. <laughs> they are traveling to U.S., London, and Dubai, all over the world, and right. So they are also in this together. But to me, uh, we should not also not be realistic, uh, unrealistic of what is happening. It's a fact. Um, they can um, hide under the cover of COVID, COVID also. Right. To be, but the fact is that it is reality 
on that. So, but uh, I also agree with him that um, the government can also be more creative. But being more creative also, we also it means um, increasing your IGR internally. It also means increasing tactics. Okay, mm. it, yes. Necessarily? That is, of course, how do you get... Necessarily? How do you, yes, where do you I, get... I, it, I, 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 would have thought, I would have thought it's about uh, making the environment a lot more business friendly, uh, making sure that the people in the, the citizens of the states are able to thrive because you don't tax on, on a thriving I, I'm telling business you, environment. Dave, I'm telling you what, the, what they do. The next thing is to pass on this to the, the common to man. The common yes, man. you understand what I mean? So by so doing, the same people we are trying to save will be the one that will bear the bronze. So, which is why I said we have to be more creative. Uh, and I've always been an advocate of the fact that uh, we need to rejig our constitution to be able to give more power to the states. To the states. To be, you understand? That has always been the problem. Um, our National Assembly are not dealing with the facts. They are not dealing with what they're supposed to do. We are talking about uh, things that doesn't make any sense to me. I think we can still do more by rejigging our constitution um, uh, so that we can have the state having enough power to be able to handle resources within their own state, that in itself can be able to help because the federal government cannot be able to do it all. Um, Osho has, if you know the, the level of good that Osho has, yes. you'll be shocked. Yeah. If you know what is lying in wait in Kogi State uh, in terms of minerals, you'll be shocked. If you go to Enugu and see what you have, you'll also be shocked. If you go to others, so the fact is that we are all relying on oil. And uh, Dave, you know, I said this some time ago, you continue laughing. I said, I'm one of those that pray that this oil should just dry up so that we can get more creative because it's making us not to think. Look at Dubai. Practically, what does Dubai oh, have? Yeah. We started before Dubai. Where, where is Dubai today? In terms of development, about 40 years ago, we ahead most of um, um, the African countries. But look at what is happening in South Africa. Look at what is happening in Egypt. And Nigeria had the first you, TV station in the whole of Africa. You, you made, Where are we? You, you made mention of um, comparative advantages that certain states have yes. in terms of mineral resources. So yes. Talking about um, bitumen, oil, I mean coal, we have gold, uh, zinc, and the rest of that. Yes. Uh, so what exactly could be the issue? I, ha I had a conversation yesterday with a guest on today's business. And we're looking at Nigeria away from oil. Yeah. Uh, and then the challenge uh, that was raised was the, the issue around um, um, exclusive lists mm -hmm. by this mineral resources. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, and, and then, and then the, the conversation was government should revisit the constitution. And then someone says, hey, if you do that, uh, the United Delta will also ask that. Um, uh, oil should be removed from government exclusive lists. If that in itself could be a challenge right now. Why we cannot um, exploit all of those other mineral resources? I don't see that as a challenge. Um, if they decide and we think that is a, a more viable, if that will happen mm. and it will help development in the in Niger Delta, I will go for it. Mm. Okay, because um, within the years, you've seen the, the, um, the level of development in the Niger Delta, despite the establishment of the Ministry of Niger Delta, despite the uh, development, um, the, the ND, NDDC, despite the 13% derivation, what is happening, there is nothing that So, but if we go that way, why not? So that every state, at the end of it all, Dave, it happened in the 60s, in the First Republic. That was why the Southwest was developed. That was how you got the Cocoa House in Ibadan. That was how so many of the developments that happened in, in, in the Southwest and some other part of the mm. country. So, I don't see any reason with that. Mm. The federal government has not been a good manage, uh, manager of resources. The okay. federal government has not been good managers of resources. Yes. I'll take you up on that. Let's speak with Chris Collins from River State. Chris, good morning. Hello, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Do we still have Chris on the line? Okay. My name is okay. I'm on the line. Good morning, Chris. Speak to us. Uh, please, my tomorrow is going to name. Okay, it's my name. You need to turn down the volume on your TV set. That's why you're having that delay. You, you want to listen to us via your TV. That's why you're having that delay. Obi, like you mentioned, you called your name, your name Chris Obi. Could you just turn on the volume on your TV set and speak to us? Thank you. Hello, are you still there? I'm afraid we even have to call back uh, again. Uh, so that's it. You said the government has not been a good manager. Federal. Uh, the federal government has not been a good manager of, uh, of, of resources. Yes. yes. So. Yes. So look at every facet of Nigerian economy. Which one have they managed well? Mm. Is it NPC? 
right? Is it um, other aspects? If you are talking of probing of NDDC, mm. let us open up the book of the NNPC tomorrow and you see mothers of, mother of all okay. wonders. Okay, um, Chris, let's, yes. have, let's move to the next. Let's look at um, this um, conversation on the front page of The Guardian. Yeah. Nigeria-China trading balance widens despite currency and swap. Um, you could remember um, some years back, uh, I think one of the first, the first ten of um, got the Mie Fiele, yeah. um, there was this um, currency swap arrangement that Nigeria had. Um, it was called the, the Rubies. Yes, the yeah. Rubies was uh, the Chinese yeah. um, uh, currency. Yeah. And what, what is made to achieve was um, a pool. Rather than trading in dollars, mm -hmm. Nigerians can now trade um, in um, in the China currency, so it was meant to eliminate the middleman, mm. the dollar middleman, mm. you know. But so far, I'm looking at the figures here, and, and it says uh, in seven years uh, there is um, a huge imbalance in the trade relations. So, uh, what, what 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 could you what could you think could be the issue here? Of course, there will always be uh, um, uh, some. Um, there must be imbalance in trade um, between Nigeria and China, because. <laughs> When you look at uh, the ratio of what we export and what we import mm. uh, from China, you come to realize that <laughs> we practically, I don't know, apart from oil, I don't know if there's any other thing we are exporting. Um, so, but practically, Nigeria is a sad deal with all sorts of things coming from China. Um, also, when I say all sorts, everything, practically everything is China. So, when you have that kind of um, arrangement, arrangement. Yeah. definitely you, you have a, a, a trade imbalance. So it's expectedly, uh, it is expected that that will happen, uh, irrespective of uh, whatever we've done and what we get, and it will continue to be so until we um, we take up uh, the responsibility of making sure that we have um, enough um, to export. Okay, because that is where the problem lies. Mm. Um, if you continue. Uh, if you cannot rejig your economy in a way and manner that you can have enough to export so as to be able to make um, more uh, in terms of um, uh, foreign currencies and the rest of that, it becomes a problem. So uh, for us, uh, if I'm sure it will be about 70 to 30 percent, if, if not about yeah, 80 to 20 percent. The imbalance, right? the imbalance will be very continued to I can't, I can't go through it. Okay, well, let's look at it. Yeah. Um, it says um, um, 2020, let's look at 20, the first quarter, mm -hmm. 1.1 trillion Naira mm -hmm. in terms of Naira. And then export is 0 0.11 trillion. You see what so you just see what I've said. Really you see, you see what I've said. Oh, all right, Chris. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, well, uh, whilst we're having the conversation, uh, the big masquerade walked in. Egun, um, Egunla. Egunla, like the yes. <laughs> Women <laughs> don't go on that the mask. So, 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 so how is here? So how are you this morning? Doing fantastic. Yeah, it's I'm good sure to have you join us on the show. Yes, so nice yeah. to be yes. here. Yeah. And apologies. Well, oh, it's okay. It's, okay. It's, it's a legal state. Uh, so I met you on talking about the trading balance between China uh, and Nigeria. Nigeria, and you keep wondering. I remember we had uh, someone who contributed on the show some time ago and said, "Okay, why don't no?" I, I, it actually was one of our on, our, on our, one of our reports where a woman said, "See, if we mean this much to all this to the West, why don't they come here to set up set up?" And then she also answered the question and said, we need to ensure that we fix a power situation in the country. If you talk to Chinese, they'll be like, okay, we want to do that, but it's going to cost us much more if yeah. you want to do business with you until you guys are able yeah. to fix the power yeah. situation in the country. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a spokesperson for the Chinese government, yeah. but sometimes you have to, uh, you must go to equity, must do so with clean hands. If you're going to uh, challenge the imbalance in the trade between you and another country, what are you bringing to the table? What can you offer? Oh. How do you want to negotiate with me if you don't have what it takes? You can compete. Me? You can compete. Basically, you can compete. You just, you just, you just nailed it when you yeah. talked about the fact that we lack the infrastructure that we could encourage we can. Um, um, investors we to come in and, and yes. set up. So yes. we can yes. compete. Yeah, we are talking about the um, AFMCFTA, yes. African um, Free Continental Free Trade Agreement yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you begin to wonder what do we have to compete. Nothing. And then you realize that most of these countries that are in this whole agreement, uh, they have links with Europe. Yeah. Some of them, there are they are they are ways um, goods can come into yeah. Nigeria. Look, we keep saying this: that Nigeria is a target market yeah. for Absolutely. the entire Africa. Nigeria is a target market with over 200 million people. Yeah. We are the target market. We have the people that would buy those things. So yeah. all they need to do is bring this thing here, and there's a market for them. Yeah, but it, then what are we giving? Yes, what are we selling out? Yes, uh, David, you have to understand. Even the United States of America set up most of its companies in China. 
because so for it, for, you know, for, because for the cost of production in the U.S. is much, much higher than, you understand, than, than in China. China. So yeah. what they do is that, so if they can have that kind of arrangement too, if they find out that cost of production here will be cheaper, yeah. to be able to, they, they'll go into that. But as we said, mm -hmm. we have the power challenge and also even the security challenges that we're having. Many when fundamental, they feel that most fundamental investors challenges. will not invest in a country uh, when they know that uh, their cities are not secured, they just move out and they get kidnapped and killed. Just today, we are just talking about the papers where a family of 30 were killed. Yeah. That is not the kind of that in itself cannot attract any investors. kind of investor into your country. So, there are a lot of challenges that we have that we have to deal with before we can start looking at ways of um, knocking off this level of imbalance. But it's control rising on the day. And we, on our own, also, despite the fact that we are waiting on them to come, around, we also have to look in what to look at the way of diversifying our economy. Mm -hmm. Let us look at those key sectors where we think we can, we have comparative advantage. advantage. We can even start with the West African um, region. Yeah. Start with West Africa region. Start uh, try as much as possible to be able to then from West Africa move out to other parts of Africa. Then before we taking off Europe and the um, United States, because for everything, if you produce, let's say, let's agree that you. You produce, let's look at pure water. For, mm -hmm. for a pure mm -hmm. water, you still you produce for whatever. If you go to China, if it's five naira, in China it might just be less than one cobble mm -hmm. that they're using producing it. Mm -hmm. Because the machineries, they manufacture the machineries. Most of the machineries they're going to use, they're going to import. You don't manufacture anything. Our steel companies are completely, our steel companies are completely dead, if you understand. Be, these are uh, those behind the idea of um, the um, rolling plants. She, we, used to, we used to have ruling plants in Nigeria. Yeah. Delta, Alaja. When I, I remember when I was in primary school and secondary school, those are the things that they were teaching us. Alaja, Delta, mm. uh, or uh, uh, what, what's the word? The Itakwe, all those kind of things. Those are major um, companies or major industrialized companies that could have changed the, the, story. the, the, story, the story totally. Yeah. If we have gotten it right, with the steel companies then. Most of the things that, because at the end of it, or even most of the uh, things that we're using that are byproducts of, from some of these things, we can use, we can even export, but where are they now? None. Um, it, 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 when I was serving in Kaba uh, in 1990, I was taking a, on a tour, we were taking off a tour of um, Itakwe. Um, uh, Itakwe. I was shocked by what I saw. Hmm. That was one of the biggest, if not in the whole of Africa, probably in the world. But at the point we got it wrong, the Soviets had to leave because we couldn't match. Uh, I don't know what the problem was. Mm. They, they left, and the whole place. Well, this was a multi-billion-dollar. Um, um, until today, they've been trying to see whether I can revive it, but whether to scale it down or whether you, to build it up. You've not, you've not seen any shock yet. Um, take a trip to. Uh, Ajakuta still. That is, you know, I was saying I was, that, I was there. I've never been to Ajakuta, so. No. You've been to Ajakuta? You've been to the Ajakuta? Yes, I have, I have been there. You, 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 you trip to Ajakuta still, will. and you would weep that is it. Uh, for, 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 for this country. Yeah. Well, well there, could be, there, could be, there could be a light at the end of the tunnel because I hear government is having talks uh, with, um, was it a German company there yeah. about? Russia. Uh, Russia. Russia. Yeah, Russia. Yes, Russia. So just, just maybe. But you need to go there to see. Yes. Okay, so let's look at the other people. Okay, so let's move over now to the Vanguard newspaper today, where the cover story is Southern Kaduna self-defense way out of killings. That's according to Christian leaders, elders, defend yourselves, and CEF tells Christians. So revive Christian trust fund. Nigerians in diaspora petition ICC. Stem tight Southern Kaduna elders to Buhari. Southern Kaduna reps counter El Rufai on causes and uh, you can find the story on page five of the paper. When you move up above the nameplate, Ndume blasts federal government over amnesty for Boko Haram fighters. And uh, that's on page seven. Don't turn a door into war zone above Benin once politicians get that on page nine. 35 Niger Delta groups demand freezing of NDDC accounts. That's on page 12. Azura Power. We signed World Bank guarantees to avoid disputes as according to the presidency. Get the details on page 14. And just below the cover story today, Lagos records 106 new infections as confirmed cases rise to 42,208. I get that on page 27. All right, other stories now. FEC, okay, it's 15.21 million euros 
1.07 billion Naira counterpart funding for Siemens Power Deal. Get that on page 8. EFCC probe presidency sends Magus boys back to police headquarters. That's also on page 8. Gunmen killed 13 family members, one other in Kogi. That's a particular one on page 6. And then to other stories, National Assembly probe may frustrate Chinese loan for rail projects. That's according to Minister of Transportation, Amici. Turn to page 8 to get the full details there. Then Naira watched this morning. Naira rises to 389.25 colour to a dollar. Uh, and then you can get the details on page 27 there. Rams waiting to buy for buyers. I mean, the purchasing power of people seems to uh, really have gone down, uh, down, down, down there. Rams waiting for buyers at a market in Iju area of Lagos on Wednesday as Muslim festival Idi Kabiru sets in. Ohane is a pandef Afeni Ferry react as Mieti Allah sets up security outfits. Get that on page seven and on the bottom strip. Resumption. Federal government rolls out schedule for WIKE. Neko, others. That's on page 11. And then, just for the laughs, Mr. and Mrs. Dear, here's a bag of rice, but I don't like the way the last one finished quickly. So I'm going to monitor this one very closely. And then Mrs. answers, okay, dear, I'm going to open a Twitter handle. Anytime I take a cup from the bag, I'll tweet you. I'm sure you know what that, who that is referring to. And that shows a bag of rice there just for us to laugh out of all the issues that we have to attend to today. All right. Yeah. All right. Interesting one there, Shion. Let's look at what the Nigerian pilot has for us. Uh, uh, always, always, always shouting. Nigeria mortgaged. That's the front page of uh, the Nigerian pilot. Nigeria mortgaged. Uh, it comes with about four riders as House of Reps raises alarm over clauses in loan deals. Says such clauses concede Nigeria's sovereignty to China. Someone's finance minister, communication minister, and DMO DG. Nigeria won't get China loans if probes continue. That's coming from Amechi. Well, you can find that story on page page eight. Amechi, uh, minister of Transpo Trans transportation there. Utimi Amechi. And then moving on, Wodo Clark attacked Daura over 2023 presidency. Uh, that story could also be found on page eight. PDP accuses APC of suppressing uh, information on corruption. 1,600 physically challenged persons to benefit from federal government's works. Southern Kaduna reps raise alarm over planned fresh attack. Sad one there. And NECO exams begin October 5. That's from the federal government. Gunmen attack Kogi village kill 14. On the lowest trip there, World Bank approves $500 million credit to support 6 million Nigerian um, girls. Uh, let's move on to just uh, above the, the, the headline there, the major headline there, just below the, the masthead. Miyeti Allah establishes security outfit praise for leaders. Bloody week as 142 persons killed, 44 kidnapped within uh, seven days. You want details of that story? It's on page seven of the Nigerian pilot. And then the picture of the day, what do we have there? Bicester State Governor Senator Doyo Diri and Speaker of the House of Assembly, uh, Abraham Ingo, Ingo Bere. Uh, this was during the signing of the revised 2020 appropriation bill into law at the government house in Yenagua. All of this took place on Wednesday. That's about it on the front page of the uh, Nigerian pilots. Yeah. And then from the Nigerian pilots, let's take on the Nigerian achievement this morning. The lead story cut worker salary, prepare for anarchy, labor wants governors. Get the details on page six. And the story actually has uh, a writer says 450 naira to dollar exchange rate criminal conspiracy against Nigerians. And then we move above the nameplate, Federal Executive Council, FEC, or case release of 8.4 billion Naira counterpart fund for Siemens electricity deal. That's Nigeria, U.S. sign agreement. Get the details on page four. WASC, Lagos lifts ban on boarding activities. NECO exams begin October 5. Common entrance exam holds October 17. 
then gunmen kill 14 in Kogi community, 13 from one family. Page 26, just below the nameplate, 17 political parties submitted nominations for Ondo governorship election, INEC, uh, that's on page 25. COVID-19, I want to receive Salah homages, says Buhari, who reopens worship centers August 14, details on page 8. 3,443 apply for a Motekun job in Ekiti, page 22. And so other stories, presidency sends EFCC zonal heads back to police. That's on page two. Suspected Boko Haram members attack Borno governor's convoy. That's a serious one on page two. And so on page two, account for account for 800 billion naira recovered from alleged looters. PDP tells APC Buhari government. And then there's a picture, a very beautiful one, showing a uh, captioned Hujaj performing the Tawaf and Sai on Wednesday in single file lines adhering to social distancing measures in a tough area of Masjid Al Haram in Mecca. World Bank approves $500 million for girls' secondary education in Ikiti, Kano, Kaduna four other states. That's on page six, and that's the cover page of the Nigerian Tribune today. Okay, so um, that's it. Let's look at, uh, let's, let's discuss. Uh, there was some politics there at those states, uh, which I think um, could also interest you, Chris, uh, where the Oba, the palace is saying, um, don't turn Edo into a war zone. Um, recent um, happenings in Edo states is suggesting that um, it's like both parties are sparing up for was just like a war as against an election in the state. Yes, um, timely too. Um, I would also say that the war started from his palace, if you understand what I mean. Yes. yes. So the war has already started from his palace because when the PDP delegation, um, after the, before, is it before, after the rally visited the, the harbor of Benin, and um, there were a lot of um, demonstrators, um, probably mostly from the opposition party, uh, they were shouting and making all sorts of remarks and um, but, um, about the um, incumbent in governor, governor yeah. and um, the party and the rest of them. That in itself led to some skirmishes and the rest of them. Uh, counter reactions. But, yes. So uh, and counter reactions and there was some, so that was just a a tip of the iceberg of what may happen at the end of the day and um, for that to have even happened. Uh, at the palace of um, the Oba in itself uh, speaks volume because everybody knows that the Oba of Benin is very revered and uh, there are certain things that you don't do around his blood beds. Um, but then secondly, the two gladiators in the whole uh, in, in, of the two political parties, the two gladiators from APC and PDP are from Benin, uh, Medo also. Benin when I mean, when I mean Medo, when I mean, yes, from Benin. Uh, so the, the Oba himself, uh, Hans, uh, seems to be tight. He, he definitely, he has no way. He can, he can only give his blessing to uh, the, his two sons. So, but um, um, the security agencies should start being on ground now because the election, the last time he do, will not be the same this time around. Okay. Um, the gladiators are ready to go for, um, for Brooke, as it were, and uh, when two elephants fight, the grass is always seems to be the one to suffer. Mm. So, but I hope that um, common sense will prevail, and they should know that politics is about it's just a game. Uh, you win, uh, you, you, you lose. lose yeah. uh, so they shouldn't take it as a do or die. I fear that one of our former presidents said, politics mm. shouldn't be <laughs> it shouldn't be a do or die affair. But yeah. in the days to come, there will be a lot of skirmishes in the, the so, and they are the same people that are causing this now. By the time the federal government sending um, security or police or soldiers and the rest of them to maintain peace and order, they will say that the state is uh, militarized and you, you know the language of a politician. Absolutely. So if it doesn't favor you, they have a way of always bringing that. Uh, that so, yeah. um, but they should also know that uh, at the same my place, um, he who fetches an ant uh, infected uh, firewood uh, should be ready to have the lizard uh, as a visitor, so that is what is happening. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, 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 that's I didn't want to say it in my little book. He's such, a, such an old man. Now, nah, Dave, uh, so, Dave, you cannot understand that. You have to let your wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Please just hold on. Let, let's speak with Dandy. That is calling from Abuja. Good morning, Dandy. 
morning. Hello? This is Danley Ogeche. Speak to us. Can I speak out? Good morning. This is Danley Ogeche calling from Abuja. Yes. My major complaint is the killing in Southern Kaduna. That is majorly my concern. You see, there is no problem that has no solution. Every problem has a solution. And this is the solution I want to perform. Three things. Very peaceful penetrating process against these two major people. In civilized clans, people should be calling for the arrest of the president and the government. This is what we should do immediately. And I tell you what, I am so disappointed in factors who mainly act for size and open instead of coming out with their members peacefully in March to protect and occupy these major places where systems are being slaughtered. There is no catch 22 in any problem. Put me any time. This is what I'm proposing. Protect people who are to occupy, if possibly, the whole Kaduna so that our president and Erupa should be called to order or be arrested. All right, Dan Lee. Thank you for your contribution there, Dan Lee. Dan Lee. Let's, let's pick this call from Gwenga. Gwenga is calling us from Abuja as well. Uh, Gwenga, good morning. Good morning, My name is Gwenga from Abuja. Good morning, Gwenga. It's an issue that's brought, that caused many lives. Uh, many lives have been lost in the recent times. And I'm, believe, I, I'm, I'm thinking that the solution lies within the communities and the two sides. You see, they have rulers, traditional ruler, governor, rep, and the rest. They should sit down at the round table and look at what the issue is. The one I'm seeing is that many of them are taking sides. Each of the group has militias who attack here and there. It's not only one side there. So the press or whatever I need to see, I see it's only the other side killing the night in the it's, it's, There are two sides of it. I mean, this is going on everywhere around the city. They have their local militia who are not ready to lay down their arms. There's a need for intelligence. There's a need for people to sit down and talk to one another to make this case certain. There's no amount of army and people can take that place. If the people are not ready to make to put an end to the killing, I'm telling you to be a waste of time. Then for the government who has given Siemens, it's own quarter part funding for the uh, power project. It's a good thing because this will attract investors in Nigeria. Even all, even all, all, all our production area like Kaduna Textile, go to Abado, to Navy, we need power. And this will be our economy. So the government will pursue the logical end so that our power system that structure can come alive to boost our economy and create jobs for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Benga, for your contribution. So you want to react to their contribution before we take on the, the next, uh, um, next the, one? First of all, is the killing going yeah. on. Yeah. Sorry, Kaduna. Kaduna is becoming um, troublesome. Um, but um, part of the investigation we have made on our own part, uh, CK News, is the fact that it's not just the, it, the Christians. It's a two-way thing now. That's killing the reprisal, reprisal yeah. attack. So um, both sides of the divide are participating in that. In fact, um, somebody told me um, a few days ago that one of his friends was lucky. He was one of those that was caught uh, by those um, from the southern Cardinal end. And um, the only thing that saved him of all the loss that this thing was that he's not um, or whatever, whatever, and by the time he mentioned his name, and they, they allowed him to go, but others were, were rounded up and um, eliminated. So, so it's killing and kind of, so um, I believe that the, the state government should be able to do more. The security agencies, uh, they say they are trying their best, but they can still do more. But don't forget that this thing did not stand today. Mm. If, mm. if you remember the days of when I was growing up, we heard of Zagon Qatar or something yeah, like Zagun that. Qatar, yeah. uh, I think that was General Lepot or one of those. Yes. Generals, I, that, I, that was the first time I heard about that crisis. And um, to believe that that crisis could linger on since then till now means that 
we've not been able to have the political will to be able to tackle it, either deliberately or indeliberately. True. Okay? Is it that some people are feeling fat from what is going on, or some people are deliberately do want to see a, a lasting solution to this? We were having that issue in Benue, don't forget, a few, few months ago, until uh, the military came in and we've had some reason. But that of Sadat Kaduna, something is amazing that we need to get to the root of it and get that stopped as we, people are being killed on a daily basis in all those places. Yeah. A friend of, 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 of ours, uh, Joel, uh, the artist, his father was killed. Yeah. Yes, Joel, you know the popular artist Joel, yeah. his father was killed. He sent me the picture of his father that was killed. You know, um, that was a few days ago. And it wasn't easy. The father was killed, his uncle was killed. In fact, we are running, you see the picture, we had the two of them lying and the rest of them. And it's not been easy. So nobody is spared. So something needs to be done. We we're going to take a look at that also in the course of our program today. We started out yesterday yes, and yes. we actually tried to also talk to the spokesperson for the governor, Mr. Amo Iwadike. I hope we'll be able to do that in the course of the program today. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's take this call from Jerry, then we can go through the next paper. Jerry's calling from Inugu. Jerry, good morning. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, uh, please, uh, my regard to Chris, Chris Mwando is uh, try to hit the point. By the fourth... Hello? By we can the, hear you. What I, want to, what I want you to observe is that uh, that Satan Kaduna is something that has been happening for long. And Erfai try to ignore it, simple because these people want to install Emir in the South of Kaduna. My brother is living there. The the family of my wife is living there. I'm telling you, the family of my wife is living there. They want to install Emir in that South of Kaduna. In fact, they want to dominate that South of Kaduna as a Muslim because that place is mainly Christian. So the reason all these things is happening and they ignore it is because. We would like to uh, air fight is calling a Sulani man, and the man believe in anything uh, Sulani and Muslim. Because if you watch out, this is a governor that the Muslim, and the deputy governor is a Muslim. He's not even care whether they kill all the Satan Kada. What is after is to make sure that he install that to, to that area. Okay, let me ask you people there. Since they kill that traditional ruler from that Satan Kaduna, through kidnapping and whatever they call it. Have they find the people that kill, kill that man? Have you seen any day they paraded the people that kill that man? The man they kidnapped with the wife and then later, after paying ransom, they went ahead and killed that man. Let us tell ourselves the truth in this country. Oh, all right, Jerry. Because this is a free club in this Jerry. Nigeria. Jerry. We are not telling ourselves the truth. Uh, My name is James. He's not Jerry. My name is James. James. For okay. Me. Uh, uh, thank you for that contribution. But let's just state this that uh, we don't have proof to all the, the allegations that you're making there. So uh, as far as we stand, those are still allegations still that have not been proven. Yes, we also have another caller, Omar. Omar is calling us from... Uh, yes, Omar, good morning. Quickly, you'll be our last caller on the show this morning. Omar, good morning. Hello, Omar. Politician think about next, next election. But the elder statement supposed to think about next generation. That is all what I can say about Mamandora. For the issue of Kaduna, uh, the federal government needs to implement the white paper. There is white paper based on the security investigation on the Kaduna issue. That white paper needs to be implemented. May God continue to be the our Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be there. Uh, thank you so much for your submission. In the meantime, let's quickly take the two remaining papers that we have for you this morning uh, before we round off on the newspaper review segment of the program. Now, let's pick uh, the news direct today. Federal government orders WIG, NECO, JAM, others to release exam timetables as states express readiness for exams. Get the details of page two. And then when you move above the name plates, Nipitex 2020, pipeline assets, critical backbone for socioeconomic development. That's according to stakeholders. Get the details of page 16. And probe of railway loans may send investors away. 
uh, Michi there on page two of the paper. And then you find the picture story showing Lagos Commissioner for Commerce, Industry and Cooperation, Mrs. Lola Akonde, Governor Babaji Tisonwolu, his wife, Dr. Bijoke, and uh, the Commissioner for Finance, Dr. Rabi Ulowo, during the sixth Lagos Corporate Assembly tagged BOS Meets Business at Lagos House Alausa Ikeja on Wednesday. You also have found another picture showing Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, during, the, uh, during his credit call on Governor Dakwa Biodun at, at his Open State office also on Wednesday. Police arrest pastor, 34 others, for kidnapping hyenas crimes. That's on page 3. Governor Zulum escapes Boko Haram attacks. Get yeah, that on page 23. And World Bank approves $500 million for girls' education in Kano, Ikiti, five other states. Also on page 13 of the Nigerian News Direct newspaper today. All right. Uh, we have the... the Sporting nation, sporting life here. Uh, we we'll have to run through that as quickly as possible because we still have some of the reactions we would like them, Chris, to make. Uh, sporting life, yes. Uh, the Premier League speed demons. Um, Greenwood Tra Traore makes season top ten fastest stars in the e in the EPL. Fear of kidnappers. Armed security operatives take Chukwueze home. Eagles player heads for Umuahia with younger brother weeks away in the White Ford. The Valeria star. Start not quarantined in Lagos. Interesting there. Um, above the master there, Napoli agree 22.7 billion naira will see me deal plus add ons uh, to earn 1.8 billion naira annually after, after tax. Um, officials, uh, official announcement today Sancho could prefer a move to Liverpool. Uh, Man City set to land Torres 21 million pounds. Boateng hints at EPL return. Bayern Munich Al Alaba talks break down due to wages. It will be two goals, one assist, not uh, good enough. And Man United's value drops by over 143 million pounds. Liverpool, the world's most valuable football club. Brands. Uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona still top the rankings and many more stories you could get on the front page of the nation's sporting uh, yes. life. Yes, yeah, thank you so yes. much. Chris, <laughs> who wants to thank you so much? We know that you have something to say, 10 seconds perhaps, to round off the news at the top well, of the hour. Um, I, I just want to um, talk about the statement created to Alaji Dada, um, Daura. Maman Daura, Daura yeah. um, over competence, uh, over and above zoning. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I don't think that uh, that is the way now. Uh, the zoning system should be able to allow to go around. And then subsequently, we can All now right. talk about. All right, thank you so much. Chris <laughs> 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 Wan, <laughs> publisher of CKN News. Thank you so much for being part of the news review segment. Thank you very of much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take thank another you. break. We'll come back. The news will come your way. To join us again. <laughs>